<laughs> giving you the third uh, uh, webinar uh, from the course National Geography in Warming Regions. Um, it will be on the topic of environmental rhetoric. And um, you can uh, put your questions in uh, uh, in chat at any time. I will try to uh, answer and follow those uh, uh, questions. Um, and I hope I will be able to uh, answer uh, to you. Uh, it will be good if you, if you have questions so we can have some uh, discussion because uh, uh, this is very controversial uh, uh, territory I will be talking uh, today about. Um, before I start with my lecture, I would like to uh, present myself. I'm a professor at the University of Zagreb. My area, uh, my faculty is mechanical engineering, uh, and my area of research is uh, energy systems, energy policy, energy economics, energy planning. Um, and um, I'm uh, quite uh, successful um, uh, on the scientific side, which you can see from uh, uh, from this first slide. So I'm uh, a scientist, but I'm also a consultant uh, that works very much in the area of climate change, energy transition. Uh, and um, I also try to communicate quite a lot in uh, media and in uh, social networks. Uh, and in this way, I think I have uh, um, a reasonably interesting view of uh, what it means to communicate uh, about environment today. It's a very difficult uh, uh, topic. So let me start with um, uh, the first issue. Uh, we have two views on uh, environment. One is coming from science. I'm a scientist. And the other one is coming from media. I'm not a media person, but I have given hundreds of interviews uh, and I know how it uh, how it works. It works very different than science. So how do we know which is correct argument and which is not? This is not easy question. Uh, but uh, depending on which side you look at, there are different ways that information is processed. Uh, OK, I have a question from Natasha. We are expected to have our Twitter accounts for the individual assignment of the week three. Uh, yes, that's uh, for sure uh, uh, will be necessary because the assignment will be linked to Twitter. Uh, so science, let me try to explain you science for those that are not uh, uh, following uh, scientific career. Science is a process. Uh, the truth itself cannot be proven. Uh, so there is no actually truth in science. The closest thing we have to truth is working hypothesis, uh, which no one has proven wrong up to now. So basically, uh, what we consider scientific truth is not really truth, is just um, the current working hypothesis, which uh, we wait for somebody to try to prove wrong. If nobody manages to prove wrong, then it's uh, probably quite right. Uh, so each hypothesis is constantly open to questioning. Uh, well, but uh, if you put... Uh, a wrong hypothesis, which is completely uh, outside of um, the way science function, then everybody will laugh at you. So, for example, if you say the apple is falling up instead of apple is falling down, um, people will just uh, laugh at you because everybody knows that uh, apples are uh, falling down. Uh, well, what has been proven later on that Newton was actually wrong uh, when he put his uh, gravity uh, hypothesis, uh, but he was wrong for like um, one millionth of a percentage point or something like that because there is uh, Higgs boson 
uh, that shows that not all things are falling uh, the same way. So uh, yes, we have uh, uh, proven him wrong, but he's actually he was actually right, and he's still right. Apples are always falling down, never up. Uh, so is scientist always right? No, of course not. Uh, the process of research by definition is full of errors on which we learn. The whole idea of scientific process is that uh, uh, we uh, we are making mistakes and then we learn of on those mistakes. So scientists can only have authority of knowing what is current working hypothesis in the area in which he or she does research. But in other areas of uh, knowledge, he's a layman, uh, like all of other people. So he's just a normal person. Uh, so somebody who is um, a great uh, um, uh, expert in, um, I don't know, uh, medicine, uh, um, but in, um, uh, in let's say, uh, uh, giving uh, 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 therapy for uh, uh, people who have problems with their uh, um, muscles or with their uh, joints, um, that person is not an expert in uh, 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 something to do with uh, pandemia. So he cannot be uh, considered expert. He is a normal layman in that area. Although he might know a little bit more than a uh, normal person, he is basically not an expert in that area. Uh, he may, though, uh, more easily understand arguments uh, since arguments are his gig. He knows how it works. That's his job. Uh, but he is not an expert. He is not reading uh, uh, detailed uh, literature. Um, uh, uh, well, I see there is a lot of discussion about opening account in Twitter. But uh, you may do that later. You will not have to deliver your assignment today. So, um, and it's quite simple. So don't worry. So can anyone question scientific authority? Yes, but only if you become a scientist yourself and learn the process of questioning. Otherwise, it's just trolling. I mean, without understanding the process, how uh, science is gathered, um, you cannot uh, manage the scientific argumentation in a very specific field uh, that you want to argument about. How does scientific process actually works? Uh, well, a scientist puts the hypothesis. Uh, then they build a method to prove it. Then they prove it, uh, and then uh, they publish it in scientific journal. But the process of uh, publishing is not that easy. Uh, you have to submit your paper, then editor will check the paper and reject it if it's considered not uh, well written, not reasonable, not novel, uh, or if it's considered to be a good uh, a way of uh, uh, thinking about uh, uh, about that topic, it will be sent to reviewers, which are actually competition. It is in the interest of reviewers to kill your paper because you are their competition. You are eating their bread. Uh, so they will try to find an error in your argumentation. And if they manage to find the argumented error, or, uh, the error they can argument, uh, they will um, uh, explain it to the editor and editor might uh, reject the paper. So if reviewers don't kill it and the editor didn't kill it, uh, then it gets published and it becomes part of the scientific truth. I'm putting it under uh, uh, oh, 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 since it's actually not truth, but it's just a, a new working hypothesis. Um, 
at any moment, any other scientist can attack it with better argumentation and publish. So it's constantly uh, open to um, attack. Uh, it should be attacked. If you see any reason to attack it, you should build the argument to attack it. But it has to be done through a process uh, which is uh, uh, transparent, but on the other hand, uh, competitive and experts are the ones who are attacking your position. Um, so this is a very, very specific, very difficult uh, process, which you need probably um, three, four years to learn. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, to achieve it. So it's not that easy. And then uh, we have media, which works in a different way. I mean, media is something that is uh, made for the market. Uh, there are people who read. There are people who pay for reading, um, who watch TV, and they want to um, uh, uh, want to get informed. So editor picks a topic and gives hints to a journalist or a journalist may be independent and choose the topic himself. And then journalist writes a story. And then editor checks if it's compatible with media editorial policy uh, and may spruce it up. Usually they add uh, a clickbait title so it gets more attractive to the readers because readers, as we know, don't spend too much time uh, uh, looking at one uh, possible source of information, especially if they read it on uh, internet. So the title is very important. And uh, very often, in my opinion, those titles don't have much to do with uh, the article itself. Does anyone check for errors? No. Uh, yeah, they do check for spelling errors in a reasonably high quality media, uh, but not for argumentation errors, uh, because that's too difficult. The topest level of uh, uh, of media uh, uh, will check for uh, for uh, uh, argumentation in a way that they will um, ask also people who have different opinion and they bring to uh, such opinions. Um, OK, so we have um, uh, the famous study on vaccines and aut autism. Uh, this is a typical case that a completely bonks uh, information can be published in scientific journal. Yes, that's true. But if I'm not wrong, this article was uh, retracted long time ago that because it was proven uh, wrong. Um, how it happens? Some of the scientists are pure liars. Others are paid by shady interests. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, it is possible that uh, such papers, if they're cleverly written, uh, get passed by the reviewers uh, 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 checking it and also editors and get published. Yeah, uh, but uh, the amount of paper that gets retracted is uh, probably around 0.12%. And some of them uh, make huge damage, like, for example, that one uh, paper. That made a huge damage to vaccination. Um, yes, it is still being quoted by a number of people. Uh, there is a huge following of um, anti-vaxxer lobby uh, uh, and um, it is happening uh, and we have to be careful to understand that if you really want to know the truth, uh, then you should also uh, check the studies who are uh, attacking this study and showing it was completely wrong and the fact that it was retracted uh, many years ago. So. Uh, of course, if that uh, paper actually proves what you want to prove, uh, because you have a belief uh, that vaccine is bad for humanity and for you, uh, then you will continue citing it. Uh, but this is not anymore part of science because it has been proved wrong. 
Uh, but it's a part of the scientific process, uh, which means that, uh, yes, we made an error, but we have corrected this error. Uh, and uh, without making errors, you cannot progress. So it's a part of the process. Uh, and uh, in a way, this one shows um, uh, how it works. So this guy says science has been wrong before. True. Uh, we know this because neuroscience told us. True. Uh, but then there is a non sequitur. It means um, a statement which doesn't follow from the previous two. Therefore, we cannot trust it. No, that's not true. Uh, the reason why we can trust uh, science is because it has a corrective mechanism uh, and it can uh, find uh, ways around the errors. Uh, we will always have errors. That's why we say uh, we actually don't have uh, science, don't establish truth because truth cannot be proven. Uh, the only thing we can prove is that something is not truth. Uh, therefore, we don't have truth. We only have working hypothesis. So uh, this guy is wrong in his third slide. Another thing which um, uh, <coughs> which is uh, quite something when uh, you uh, you come to social networks, Facebook, Twitter, whichever, uh, then you find out a huge number of guys who uh, uh, have lots of arguments which sound quite reasonable, quite logical to you because you don't know nothing about the topic. I mean, I don't know nothing about uh, vaccines. That's not my topic. Uh, but I know about this study, which uh, uh, made quite a lot of uh, uh, problems in history. Uh, so, but I'm an expert in one field. So I could be this guy who studied three years for degree and then three more for PhD. I did actually many more years because uh, in ex-Yugoslavia, it was a different system. Then I was uh, researching for many years. Uh, I was uh, studying the problems for many years. Then I built the hypothesis, gather evidence, tested hypothesis, formed conclusion, uh, and I published. And then there is guy who comes to me and he says just bullshit as an argument. Uh, because he has seen um, a video on YouTube uh, that whatever I do is conspiracy and uh, I'm wrong. So this is the type of arguments that you will often see uh, on social networks. Sometimes they will be quite plainly uh, uh, simple like bullshit, but sometimes they will be very elaborate. We will see today um how these guys uh, work and they will be coming with uh, same and same arguments i think i've seen some arguments for thousands times um and uh, if you uh, deconstruct their argument they just uh, pull another argument so uh basically if you uh, find the scientist on the on the social networks uh, they will be heavily attacked by trolls. Uh, and uh, if you're not an expert in the field, it's very possible that you will actually side with the troll because his arguments are simpler, easier to understand, logical, uh, and repeated many times. Okay. Let's go a bit to some scientific uh, or very important topics. Uh, yes, I agree. Uh, echo chambers, confirmation bias. Um, uh, it is also true that there are algorithms. Uh, that's right, but uh, uh, algorithms will not uh, clean uh, out the, the 
uh, the different opinion uh, from people that have um, a relatively elaborate positions uh, on one side and on the other side the trolls will seek to attack uh, people that have uh, uh, serious opinion because that's their job so uh, it's uh, uh, not complete uh, wall between one side and the other side but there are quite a lot of walls yes there is uh, if you enter a community which has um, especially if it has some kind of uh, conspiracy idea it will most often get this confirmation uh, bias and echo chamber so let's go to climate change uh, from the scientific point of view uh, that has been proven uh, by Arrhenius in 1896. In 1896, he has published an uh, article in which he has uh, put the hypothesis that CO2 will uh, cause the climate change, the global warming. And he has basically calculated uh, for how much, depending on how much coal are we going to burn. Uh, and uh, his uh, theory has... Uh, held more or less since then. We now have uh, much better models, um, but uh, they are not giving very different results. He predicted uh, increase of temperature by five degrees, uh, which would happen if we uh, didn't stop or uh, we will we'll not stop using uh, coal uh, in the next uh, 20, 30 years. Uh, there is a company, now it's called ExxonMobil, but at that time was Exxon Oil, which um, had an excellent uh, uh, laboratory of science, uh, uh, and they calculated uh, how much uh, global warming uh, the world can expect if we continue using fossil fuels. And it was incredibly precise. So it was more precise than um, Arrhenius. Uh, and then they decided to start paying for hiding that fact. And they started paying for all kinds of uh, information that was uh, uh, showing that there is not going to be climate change, etc. But not everyone knows how to do it or to question information. Yes, I fully agree with that. So that's why you're here uh, to try to learn that. I mean, uh, it's not easy because um, uh, if uh, you want to, uh, to, to learn communicating on social networks in one, uh, one field, you have to actually be an expert. Uh, but uh, you can learn from your own field because you probably have your own field. Um, and if you start thinking about, uh, OK, who is uh, s uh, following scientific uh, argumentation here and who is trolling, uh, then you will start to differentiate uh, uh, different uh, people. Uh, and then you might uh, maybe uh, also apply it to similar areas. Uh, but it's not easy. So if you're not an expert in the field, be careful on what conclusions you make from uh, social networks. It's better not to make uh, conclusions from social networks because 90% uh, of information there is uh, wrong. Uh, it depends also on uh, languages, that's true. Uh, if you are from, uh, if you speak English, you can get a huge amount of information, but if you don't speak English, you might be limited to a uh, much smaller amount of information. And sometimes uh, uh, your cultural space, your language space may be completely under control of people who are not uh, scientists. Unfortunately, what I see in uh, media today, because of complicated uh, publish, uh, financing models, is that um, uh, they are very close to some uh, uh, lobbies. 
and uh, the quality of information we get is actually uh, falling. But you can still find in um, in some languages relatively good uh, media. Uh, yeah, there is always information and op uh, on opportunity to find right information. Uh, Wikipedia is uh, a relatively good source of information in English because it's policed, but not so good in other languages because in uh, other languages it can be hijacked by uh, some particular interests. Uh, but scientific information is always better, but also can be wrong, as we have seen. But it's rarely wrong, and uh, we quickly retract such wrong information. So since 1992 and the uh, UN Framework uh, Convention on Climate Change, we have a political consensus that there is climate change. So we have scientific consensus from uh, both independent scientists and those that uh, really had interest in uh, not uh, finding out that there is climate change. And then we have political uh, global consensus. Uh, so there is absolutely no question that there is any question about climate change actually happening and being anthropogenic, so done by people. But when you look at media, it will often say it's not certain. So when they say it's not certain, uh, it's because fossil fuel companies are financing campaigns to confuse voters. Uh, that has been proven many times. You have quite a lot of material on that. Uh, and uh, uh, what we can do is just uh, 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 understand that this question has been solved scientifically a long time ago. So whatever and whoever is saying otherwise, it's quite uh, wrong. Yes, Scholar Google is great for scientific uh, articles uh, because uh, they search all of them. Some of them are available. Some of them you can only get through a paywall, uh, but there are other ways how to get uh, uh, such articles uh, free of charge, either by sending an email to the one who wrote it. He will probably be happy to send it or exchange it with other researchers, or there are other ways which I'm not allowed to say here. Okay, so what are the arguments of climate change deniers and climate change confusers? There is no climate change. They started with that. And um, it was proven that Exxon was uh, financing heavily those people saying that there is no climate change. Even uh, scientists who were trying to prove, but there are very few of them, but they still exist. And they were trying to publish, but that was difficult. So they usually publish on their own websites or, or on YouTube. And this is not reviewed information, so it's not something that has been uh, checked by other people. Uh, then there is another layer of arguments that says uh, there is not enough information and knowledge. There is. It has been proven. It's closed. There is no question. We are still researching about some very small details, but these details mean are we going to have a, a 3.5 or 3.6 degrees with the current policies? So it's not really that um, uh, not enough information. Uh, yeah, Researchers Gate is uh, also excellent source of information, and often you can get uh, full papers there because authors reposit them on Researchers Gate. Also, university websites, or you can search uh, in different repositories, uh, and you will find quite a lot of material. Uh, that is true. On, then another argument is there is. Um, uh, global cooling due to Milankovitch cycles. OK, so now we have a half true. There are Milankovitch cycles and they create um, uh, uh, cooling, uh, global cooling. But these global cooling are called ice ages. 
and they happen every 20,000 years. So this uh, uh, cycling is in periods of 20,000 years, and we have the climate change which is happening on the level of 100 years. So it has nothing to do with each other, although to a lay person it might look significant, uh, it's actually not significant because we are going to have ice age in 10,000 years, uh, and who knows, are there going to be any humans left? But if we continue with fossil fuels, we're going to destroy Earth, uh, most of uh, species and life uh, will disappear, go end, extinct by the end of the century. Then there is another uh, bunch of arguments which say it's not anthropogenic, it is solar uh, activity, volcanoes, earth wobbling, natural. Or, this is again half true. All these uh, sources do cause uh, either global warming or global cooling. But it has been proven that they are negligible compared to uh, uh, carbon emissions due to fossil fuels. Then there is argument there is no consensus. That has been proven wrong. 97% of uh, papers, uh, it's quite clear that they're on the side of consensus. And the other 3% has uh, have recently been proven wrong. Uh, so 3% of climate paper uh, have been wrong and uh, proven wrong, and maybe even, who knows, financed by fossil fuel lobbies. Uh, so there is consensus. Climate change is slowing. This comes often. Why it looks like slowing? This is again half truth. Because you have 10 year periods in which uh, El Nino, El Nina effects and warming of oceans slows down uh, the warming of atmosphere. But then after that comes a big jump and then there is a plateau and then a big jump and the plateau. So uh, if you look last five years, it can always look like, well, it's slowing. It's not. It's actually uh, getting faster and faster. Um, we have already done it. I mean, destroy the Earth, so relax and enjoy in the destruction. Uh, well, uh, we have definitely done a terrible damage to uh, nature, uh, but it's a huge difference. Do we do damage at two degrees or three degrees? So we didn't uh, done it. We only done a little bit, and if we let fossil fuels continue, uh, the damage will be bigger and bigger. So this is a wrong argument completely. And then there is uh, magical solutions. We can magically solve it by carbon storage, geoengineering or uh, nuclear, whatever. Uh, well, we cannot. These things uh, um, don't really work. They're untested. Uh, they're probably quite expensive and nobody is really uh, investing in them. So it's just uh, blah, blah, that sh uh, should confuse us and think, okay, we can continue with our lives uh, since somebody will solve the problem for us. Uh, another subject, sustainability. Sustainability has been defined by a World Commission on Environment and Development, so-called Brutland Commission, as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. What does it mean? Are we sustainable? No. Uh, using fossil fuels cannot be sustainable since they are not renewable. Because we are using them, we are uh, depleting the reserves, uh, which means that uh, uh, we are not going to have them in future. Uh, and that is not sustainable. And besides that, there is a huge damage done by uh, fossil fuels, which is uh, very difficult to uh, put back. So even if we stop emitting uh, fossil fuels, it will take 500 years uh, for CO2 to start uh, significantly falling down. So um, we have uh, done the damage. 
uh, with fossil fuels and they are not sustainable. Uh, global warming is not sustainable since the changes it causes are irreversible. Uh, the uh, temperature can be reversed, but it will uh, take um, a long time. But biodiversity loss cannot be reversed because once we lose biodiversity, it's lost forever. Climate change is not the only cause of loss of uh, biodiversity. There are others, uh, human uh, use of land, uh, for example, but uh, climate change has a very uh, significant role in uh, uh, major extinction. Why? Uh, by dividing habitats and making them smaller and cutting them by human civilization, by cities, agriculture, uh, what we do, we do barriers in that in case of climate change, uh, species cannot move to an area which is more, uh, which is uh, uh, where they can adapt to new situation. Uh, because we cut uh, nature into pieces, uh, they cannot move. So they will just disappear in their areas if they cannot sustain uh, the, the, the uh, increase of temperature. Uh, land use change brings fall in biodiversity, which is also unsustainable. So we cannot be sustainable at all. This is not possible. Sustainability, it's not uh, a goal that can be reached, but we can be more sustainable. And it's hard to measure. We have some uh, scientific methods how to measure, uh, but it's uh, it's not an easy subject. So uh, European Union has put forward a relatively good concept of taxonomy of sustainable activities. So they have uh, 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 found six different fields which are important for sustainability from the current point of view. Climate change mitigation, climate change adaptation, uh, sustainable use and protection of water and marine resources, the transition to circular economy, pollution prevention and control, the protection and restoration of biodiversity and ecosystems. Uh, it's not probably covering everything, but most of the problems are covered here. And they have uh, um, said which technologies are more sustainable and which can be considered sustainable and which cannot. Uh, technologies that are considered sustainable are those that are better than the others. So if you have a technology that is better than other technologies, that one is currently the most sustainable, uh, although it's not absolutely uh, sustainable. And then uh, the process goes like this. Uh, uh, any activity to be considered sustainable must uh, contribute to at least one of the six environmental objectives as defined in the proposed regulation. And should not uh, do significant harm in any other of five environmental objectives. So if you are solving climate, you shouldn't destroy biodiversity. And you should also comply with minimum safeguards. So this is this looks like a very good uh, rule of thumb how to treat uh, uh, how to treat uh, 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 human activities uh, that all of them are not really sustainable and all of them have some impact on environment. OK, so lo let's look at um, some technologies, for example, to produce uh, electricity. Um, this is IPCC and it compares life cycle CO2 equivalent emissions, so includes also uh, emissions of methane <coughs> and other six uh, <coughs> gases uh, 
uh, uh, uh, greenhouse gases. So coal is as highest gas has uh, very high biomass. Unfortunately, has also uh, uh, relatively high, and it's going up because we are cutting more and more biomass, and uh, cutting biomass means the change of land use. Um, and then we have uh, technologies which are not perfect, but are much better than the ones we um, are using uh, uh, now, like solar, hydro, nuclear, uh, and wind. Uh, these technologies have very low uh, uh, life cycle CO2 equivalent emissions. So obviously, those ones that are uh, renewable and nuclear are uh, sustainable from the point of view of climate change. OK, so let's look at another issue. How uh, does one of those technologies, one of the best, you see wind is the best, uh, actually uh, influences biodiversity? Uh, do uh, wind turbines kill birds? The answer is yes. This is one of the sources and uh, it gives number numbers for US. Uh, around 10 to 40,000 birds are killed in uh, US. So it looks like a big number, uh, but uh, please, whoever has a, ca a cat, um, raise your hand. Let me see how many cats we have. Only five cats, six cats. OK, nine cats, 11 cats, 14 cats. OK, 16 cats. OK, do you know how many birds uh, your cats kill? Many, many hundreds of billions, uh, hundreds of millions of birds are killed by. Um, uh, so you can put your hand down now. Uh, uh, hundreds of millions of birds per year are killed by uh, cats. Uh, then many are killed by power lines. Uh, maybe up to billion birds are killed by windows. Uh, many birds are killed by cars, by uh, uh, communication towers, by uh, pesticides. Uh, and the wind turbines are just a little, 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 little part of, of uh, birds killed. So nobody was actually talking about um, uh, birds being killed before, uh, but everybody talks about wind turbines killing birds. It's not fair. So uh, what do you think? Who is behind, um, uh, behind that uh, uh, information going around in media? Uh, that birds are being killed by wind turbines. Probably somebody who doesn't like wind turbines. So you see the cat is the biggest uh, uh, killer. Um, I have done once um, a, a, sh a short study, of course, oil industry, yes, and gas industry. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. <coughs> so, uh, media writes around 10,000 times more articles about birds killed by wind turbines than those killed by pesticides. How I did it? Um, I did um, uh, Google all the articles about uh, wind turbines killing birds and all articles about uh, 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 birds being killed by pesticides and then divided by actually uh, real uh, birds being killed, and I got uh, 10,000 factors. Nobody pays for articles uh, writing about birds being killed by pesticides. Uh, so, uh, funding is available for green working on birds killed by, uh, by sorry, by uh, wind turbines. There is an error here. Uh, but nobody pays for those killed by other sources. Um, it is um, uh, considered that around one sixth of birds have vanished from Europe, around three billion from North America, and nobody actually talks about that. Why? Well, because nobody cares about birds. Uh, it's the only uh, people care 
or some interests care about wind turbines. Uh, one huge issue is insects. Have you noticed that uh, there are no more insects on your windshield when you're driving? Uh, you have to go to Africa or Latin America maybe to get some, uh, uh, some insects on your windshield. Uh, 20 years ago, there was a lot of them. Uh, what happened? We killed them all by pesticides. And by that, we killed most of the birds who eat insects. They disappeared because they have no insects anymore. Uh, so we actually uh, uh, made them extinct in Europe and North America because you, we use a lot of uh, very potent, uh, high potent uh, 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 poisons on uh, our fields. And the result is there are no more birds. But everybody talks about uh, 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 birds being killed by wind turbines. And I see some cat people got really offended by me uh, because their uh, birds are killing, uh, their cats are killing birds. But that's a fact. But um, that's probably, that would probably be part of nature if those cats would be natural uh, creatures. But because they're our pets, uh, there is probably around a uh, million times more of them than nature would sustain. So what if we ban wind because it kills birds? There are many countries in which uh, lobbies have managed to push that proposal to uh, through the media and to the politics. Well, climate change between three and five degrees would kill 95% of species. Uh, so most of bird species would be also gone and there would be no birds left to save. So either we build wind turbines and we kill 30, 40,000 birds, or we don't build them and we kill all the birds, or we find some other technology to save the climate, of course. So if we look at uh, our rule on um, uh, uh, sustainability, uh, wind turbines are substantially contribute to climate change, but do not significant harm to birds. Uh, but they should comply with minimum safeguards. So we should not build wind turbines when they're, where they're uh, uh, raptors, because raptors uh, are birds that uh, have small numbers and we should be especially careful about them. OK, so uh, let's. Uh, now for 10 minutes, watch this uh, video. I will now share it uh, uh, in a browser. OK, I have to share it with sound. Otherwise, you will not be able to hear. Okay. Star Wars Kid, the Techno Viking, shopping, communication, all the information in the world ready when you need it. The internet is a magical place, but there are also some weird corners, and I'm not talking about your parents' Facebook page. I'm talking about the dark underbelly, the ugly face of conspiracy theories and misinformation that shows itself in obscure forums and chat groups, but also in our comment section, especially under stories about renewables. We've been seeing some pretty weird takes on wind and solar. So we asked ourselves, why does this stuff keep floating around the internet? And where does it come from? Here's what we did. We read the thousands of comments posted under our videos on wind and solar and collected those that smelled of misinformation. Some were pretty vague. Some pretty left field. But some did make an argument. Some also pointed us to other places. So we went deeper into the anti-renewables bubble. The big renewable lie. This is a crackpot fantasy slash distortion. And slowly patterns emerged. The same talking points kept coming up. And as futile as it may be, we decided to debunk them. We asked three energy experts for help. Auke Hoekstra of Eindhoven University of Technology, Paulina Jaramillo of Carnegie Mellon University, and Mark Jacobson of Stanford University. 
So this started out as a straightforward fact check, but it led us into a world of shady lobby groups and secret money streams. We'll get to that. Let's start with the one claim we saw over and over again. People kept pointing out that making wind turbines and solar panels creates emissions because it needs energy. The whole thing is built using fossil fuel infrastructure. All these materials have to be mined, refined and or manufactured in order to make solar panels. Requires massive amounts of conventional energy. And yes, that actually applies to every form of energy generation. But some spelled out what others just insinuated, that renewables are worse for the climate than fossil fuels. The fumes coming up to make, make these massive windmills is more than anything that we're talking about with natural gas. No, 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 no. That's just, like, just not true. If you look at all of the life cycle studies on different power generation technologies, uh, wind and solar, even when you account for the mining of materials and the production, it's, it's just, it's not even close. For wind and solar, I think for wind, you are now at 20 grams per kilowatt hour that you emit. And for, for, for solar, I think on average, it's now like 40 uh, grams of uh, CO2 per kilowatt hour. And that's a fraction like one tenth or one twentieth of what you get with uh, 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 fossil fuels. Of course, wind and solar have a carbon footprint, but it's tremendously lower than that of any fossil fuel. Oh, and this next rumor, by the way, is also not true. A wind farm spends the first seven, eight years of its life earning back the energy that went into building the wind turbine. It's such nonsense. It's such utter nonsense. I mean, for windmills, it takes like half a year nowadays uh, uh, for the windmill to produce as much energy as it took for the whole thing to be produced and put in place. So with this one out of the way, on to the next one. A classic on the renewables bashing hit list. The essential unreliability of solar and wind. Solar and wind are unreliable fuels. We cannot rely on renewables alone. The message here is that solar and wind will plunge us into chaos. This isn't exactly a news flash, but the sun doesn't shine all the time. And the wind doesn't blow all the time. And those peddling this myth got very excited in early 2021. Record snowfall in parts of Texas. Deadly winter storm blanketed most of that state with snow and ice. More than two million people in Texas without power. Winter storms swept across the U.S. state of Texas, leading to severe power outages that killed hundreds of people. And the anti-renewables propaganda machine immediately found a culprit. The windmills froze, so the power grid failed. Even the state's governor, who's received millions of dollars in campaign funding from the oil and gas industry, blamed renewables. Our wind and our solar got shut down, and that thrust Texas into a situation where it was lacking power. It just shows uh, that fossil fuel is necessary uh, for the state of Texas. This picture started spreading online, and along with it, the narrative that frozen wind turbines caused the blackout. But they didn't. The photo was actually taken in Sweden and first published in 2015, and frozen wind turbines were really not the biggest problem in Texas. It was basically, a, yeah, as you said that in non-polite uh, uh, English, it was basically a cluster of The nuclear went down, coal went down, natural gas went down, and a portion of the wind turbines went down simultaneously. A report by the University of Texas, which came out in the catastrophe's aftermath, showed what the biggest problem was outages in fossil fuel power plants, especially those running on natural gas. Yes, some wind turbines also stopped working, but that could have been prevented. There are wind turbines in many states in the US and in Northern Europe that don't freeze because they actually have de-icing equipment on them. So the problem was not intrinsically with the wind turbines, but the fact that there was no de-icing equipment. What happened in Texas was not the fault of renewables, but that's exactly what countless people were told and believed. And the big problem is, they probably still do. The online world is like a kind of cooking pot. There are things that have been in that cooking pot for quite a, quite a long while. There are new ingredients being added in. Every time it gets added in, it gets stirred up. This is Neil Johnson, who researches online misinformation. What you see in the background is a map of how it spreads throughout the internet. At any one time, in any place in this, in this network, can appear any kind of combination of pre-existing 
Racism, COVID conspiracies, climate change denial, they all spread in the same way between similar online communities across all kinds of platforms. It's like a parallel universe to the establishment best science guidance discussion, which I, unfortunately, I have to say, it's not shown here, but if I did show it, it would be a kind of tiny blob in the corner talking to each other massively with fantastic science, but talking to each other. The sheer size of this network is scary. And what makes it even scarier is that it's not only members of the Tinfall Head Brigade. There's a kind of background glue, which is not these extreme people, uh, you know, who spend their whole life worrying about this. It's, it's the rest of us, it's parents, it's people who are concerned about their kids' future, people who are concerned about their local neighborhood, etc., who are going out and looking for information and kind of like they're taking ownership of the decision of whether a particular piece of science is correct or not. Our brain plays its part in this as well. It favors information we get from people we trust or admire and information that supports our worldview. Change can be intimidating. And it's also not always easy to separate fact from fake. Much of the misinformation out there does contain a grain of truth that then gets blown out of proportion. Yes, solar panels do have a carbon footprint, but it's tiny compared to that of fossil fuels. Yes, some wind turbines did freeze in Texas, but that wasn't the main reason for the blackout by a long shot. Context matters. Also for this diehard myth about wind turbines. They're terrible for birds. Kills all the birds. Again, it's true that wind turbines kill some birds, but cars kill significantly more. And so do skyscrapers and even cats. And while we're on cats, let's just look at a few more because I really need a break. Ah. Debunking is a hard and thankless job. The list of falsehood about renewables circulating online is pretty much endless. We could keep telling you what's wrong with them, one by one, forever. And I guess that's what the people behind them want us to do. They want to keep us busy and distracted from asking way, way more interesting questions. Like, who's peddling these myths in the first place? It's kind of hard to... To pinpoint it, I, I think it's a lot of think tanks, uh, 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 right-leaning think tanks. In the US, there's a bunch of them, with names like the Heartland Institute, Committee for a Constructive Tomorrow, or Institute for Energy Research. They publish reports and articles that somehow always seem to find that renewables are horrible, and they post anti-renewable propaganda on social media. These machines kill a lot of birds. Unreliable energy infrastructure, which failed Texas. Not to mention many of them straight up deny climate change or at least downplay it. They get most of their funding through donations and grants. And wouldn't it just be interesting to know from whom? Usually the, the most interesting think tanks don't mention where they get their money from. So it's basically a lot of guesswork. Sometimes we do get the odd glimpse into their finances. In the past, many of them received money from ExxonMobil, according to the fossil fuel giant's donation reports. But usually most of this plays out behind closed doors. The think tanks operate as non-profit charities, which allows them to keep secret who their sugar daddies are. We do know, though, through tax files, that many receive substantial funding from the Donors Trust. This organization has been described as the dark money ATM of the conservative movement in the US. It distributes more than $100 million a year to right-leaning politicians and institutions. But they're also a non-profit charity, so there's no way of knowing who's funding them. But even if it's hard to name names, it's easy to see who profits from the disinformation. Usually the supporters of their status quo. And people who either have a financial interest or have a just an ideological um, opposition to renewable energy. Quite frankly, it's been frustrating and disheartening to see all these outlandish claims about wind and solar still out there. I guess it's important to take them for what they are, a symptom. A symptom of a trillion dollar industry clinging onto its business model. Doubts about the alternatives and fear of change are helping it keep its grip. Now, this has been a real trip down the rabbit hole. 
Have you ever come across any misinformation online or from family and friends? How do you deal with it? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to hit subscribe because we have a new video coming out for you every Friday. Okay, so um, let me go back to the presentation. Okay. Um, is there any room of tracking activities to address info biases? Uh, 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 well, um, not really a service, but if you follow some people uh, on uh, Twitter, for example, uh, for example, these people uh, that were in this video have actually excellent uh, Twitter accounts, both uh, Jacobson and uh, Oxtra. Um, I guess probably also others, but I'm not following uh, other of uh, those that spoke in this YouTube. Uh, uh, you also saw that I use material from YouTube. Uh, YouTube has a lot of um, trolling material because it's not uh, checked. Um, and um, of course, uh, anybody can put anything on YouTube. Um, so uh, if you are watching things from YouTube, uh, you have to know, are they uh, coming from uh, scientific background or from uh, fossil fuel lobby paid background. Uh, this is on you and uh, I hope I uh, I will teach you with this uh, lecture to uh, get a feeling uh, how to differentiate it. Free speech is a human right. Yes, that's true. Uh, and there is nothing uh, problematic about that, but um, not everything in every situation. So, uh, as I said, when we have discussion about climate change, this is a scientific uh, problem. So we should let uh, scientists uh, discuss that. They will, even they, they will not uh, 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 or, or, or agree um, completely, but you cannot have just a dude coming from uh, nowhere and without education and just saying bullshit to the scientific argument because well it's his free speech he should not be arrested he should have a right to say it but we should ponder his position with zero and only ponder high the positions that uh, are coming from respectable uh, sources uh, uh, well, uh, Mladen is correct. Uh, this right to speech is very much used by anti-vaxxers today. Um, by fossil fuel trolls, a uh, little bit less. Uh, I didn't uh, notice that one so much, but uh, we have to be careful to understand what means free speech. Uh, yes, it is hard to regulate on social media. Uh, and the question is, um, should we regulate? We should, of course, uh, regulate uh, uh, threats, uh, calls for murder and things like that. But uh, uh, we should learn how to live with trolls. And that's why this lecture is more about um, how to uh, understand the materials that you see uh, on Internet. Uh, so, uh, Next uh, slide is about uh, one uh, trolling, which is uh, quite often now uh, uh, used. It's about uh, materials. So this guy, uh, Brian Gitt, who is a very elaborate guy, he has lots of arguments, but he is a typical uh, troll who uh, I'm not able to admit any more people. Uh, I don't know, uh, Dan, uh, if you uh, can help. 
there is a person in the lobby. So this guy is pushing lots of arguments. I've seen these arguments thousands of times, so he is just pushing them continuously. One of those arguments is that wind turbines require a lot of material. 900 uh, tons of steel, 2,500 tons of concrete, 45 tons of non-recyclable uh, plastic. Well, uh, and then he compares them with different uh, technology uh, and takes uh, the graph coming out of uh, International Energy Agency, so uh, reputable source. So why? what might be wrong with this... Uh, uh, with this uh, uh, tweet. Uh, okay, let me go back uh, to the browser and then open the tweet. Uh, okay, so what I did the argument was, uh, what about adding also fuels? I mean, we are, um, fossil fuels are using uh, quite a lot of uh, minerals called uh, fossil fuels. They are minerals. It's either coal uh, or gas, and there are millions of tons. So this is negligible completely compared to uh, those materials. Uh, uh, but then you have people following his argument, and then there is uh, uh, also guy who is putting the argument how this is going to grow showing that uh, this is really not uh, sustainable. Uh, and then guy showing a typical picture of winter by burning and saying that uh, 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 something which looks very um, uh, logical, but it's completely nonsense because uh, uh, he says we need oil to gear boxes and grease bearings. Otherwise this happens. Uh, we need, but uh, they don't have to be necessarily mineral. We can produce them from uh, uh, electricity. Uh, so you have a big discussion uh, uh, going further. Uh, and uh, most of the people discussing here are trolls. Some are not trolls. So this is uh, where you can practice your troll slaying activities uh, on such uh, uh, Okay, so uh, I will now go back to my presentation. And uh, try to resume. And then uh, there is um, a graph about uh, 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 Darko, can you uh, let Alexandra in? Because he's popping me all the time on the screen. Okay, he's not hearing me, so I don't see half a screen. So uh, he says that we will need many more mines uh, to open. Uh, 30 cobalt mines, 70 lithium miles, 80 copper mines uh, at the cost of 450 uh, billion uh, dollars. So let's look how um, the responses go to his uh, tweet. Uh, okay, I have to share it. Uh, okay. So this is peanuts compared to needed investment in uh, oil upstream. So uh, all these mines is actually very, very little compared to oil investments and gas investments. And there is also um, one in interesting fact that there is uh, $5,900 billion uh, of fossil fuel subsidies according to International Monetary Fund. Uh, so this is uh, uh, peanuts. All these mines, yes, we will need mines. That's negligible problem, but uh, he makes it looks big, and many people uh, think it's a big problem. And then normal people come to me, okay, and they say mines. Uh, and then he obviously lies about 70, uh, 17 years. 
he says uh, accord, 17 years according to the National Energy Agency. And then the other guy who is uh, a troll slayer, he says, well, it's actually four years, you know. Um, this 17 years, it's uh, uh, the period, uh, the total period of research, but uh, uh, we have already researched many mines. Um, so we can bring them quickly. For example, there is this uh, possible mine of lithium in Serbia, which was stopped, uh, but all this process was done. So uh, it could be uh, put in production relatively quickly. And there are a lot of such mines that could be put into production quite quickly, which is uh, different from nuclear power plants because we don't have so many projects ready for nuclear power plants. So we need this uh, research uh, exploration period uh, of 10 years for uh, nuclear power plants, unless there is a project that can be uh, put into construction uh, quickly. Uh, and then let me go back to my presentation. OK, so there is um, uh, materials. So he says that uh, uh, building a nuclear power plant requires 18 times less material than building a solar plant and shows an old graph. And then there is a guy who says, well, you're using nuclear numbers from 1971 design. So it's a half true, but it's mostly wrong. And solar numbers are musing from 2002 paper uh, when there was no uh, big solar power plants built. So this is nonsense uh, because these numbers are just uh, stretching uh, so that fit the nuclear uh, 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 rhetorics. Okay, sorry. I have to go to the page again. Okay. This has this is a bit complicated. And then there is a guy showing uh, updated version of the data. Do you see the big picture? Which shows that, well, nuclear is actually needing quite a lot of material. Uh, these are some uh, materials that come in uh, very small amounts on the left side, like uh, copper, uh, like uh, lithium, nickel, uh, uh, manganese, cobalt, uh, graphite, silicon, rare earths, platinum, and other critical uh, elements. And then on the right side, you have this bulky material like steel, aluminium, cement, plastic, and glass. So if we look just at construction materials, uh, then renewables are quite competitive with nuclear on the material basis. So this is debunking completely the uh, material argument of the trolls, but you will be seeing it uh, for uh, uh, millions and millions of times uh, if you follow uh, Twitter discussions on this, because they will be coming uh, uh, all the time again and again uh, to these uh, issues. Okay, let me go to the next uh, tweet. Um, Okay, the trash one. Uh, solar industry will sink under the weights of its own trash. Most solar panels won't get recycled because it is too expensive. Governments fear groundwater contamination from disposal of hundreds of millions of solar panels. Okay, so what are uh, the answers to that? Uh, 
Did I click? Um, ah, sorry. I did actually. OK. Uh, what are the answers? OK, so. Um, uh, sure, nobody wants to recycle that aluminium in the picture, which is mostly recycled at 90 percent. So, of course, everybody will uh, when there will be significant amount of solar uh, panels want to recycle metals on them because they are very valuable. Uh, today, there are still not much solar panels going around because they last for 30 years. And we only started with uh, installing significant amount of solar panels after uh, 2010. So we are only going to have this problem uh, after 2030 or maybe 2040. Uh, and uh, then we will, of course, uh, uh, recycle it because quite a lot of that material is recyclable. Uh, yeah, you can throw that silver trash in my garbage. There is a lot of silver in it. Uh, so when you... Uh, uh, look further, you see a lot of people uh, making fun uh, on uh, on the guy. You can even uh, sell your used solar panel because uh, there are guys who are buying them. So you can get money for them because they can get recycled. Uh, we will get better and better with that, but we still need quantities in order to develop recycling industry. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't uh, really make uh, uh, sense to start recycling uh, if uh, uh, if the quantities are too small. So it's not an issue. Uh, and then we have uh, um, a very interesting thread. This one is from the guy who is debunking uh, uh, these material issues. Uh, let me show you this tweet thread. So he says, as a Google born 90s kids, I haven't spent much of my time in mines, but I'm quite accustomed to data mining. I hope that you haven't spent much of your time worrying about uh, a troll who is pushing the material problem. Earth will not be destroyed because of energy transition related mining. And then he goes with arguments and he uh, argument by argument uh, deconstructs uh, 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 the position of the trolls that talk about uh, about uh, uh, mining problem. Energy transition minerals will be only around two to three percent of the total amount of minerals that we used up to now. So it's completely insignificant uh, compared to other uses. Uh, so this is uh, uh, what what we need. It's the uh, yellow area and the gr uh, gray area is what we already uh, used of minerals. Uh, so it's completely debunked in this thread. You will get a presentation so you can uh, read it uh, more carefully and uh, learn uh, the way how uh, uh, the best to to uh, debunk uh, the trolls. I'm using that thread whenever a troll uh, comes up with uh, uh, with an argument uh, about the minerals. Um, OK, so what about fighting trolls? Let us look at Jacobson, one of uh, uh, the best guys to follow if you're interested in uh, energy transition. Uh, he is um, uh, a great scientist, uh, but uh, OK, wrong. He is a great scientist, but he is uh, uh, also a Twitter. So. Uh, what he says uh, that renewables accounted for 50% of German electricity, which is 4% uh, higher than before. Uh, and he gives some data and then he is attacked by uh, trolls. Um, uh, this Christian Borglum is one of the trolls, which is very refined. He will use lots of arguments. Uh, and then uh, um, I enter with uh, in a long discussion with him. Uh, let me see where are, where is my uh, tweets. Yes, 
uh, since I was actually wanting to show you how it works if you start engaging a clever, well informed troll. So uh, well, he is pushing nuclear and I say, well, so nuclear is intermittent when it works, it produces when it uh, does not, it needs backup. Year 2022 was particularly bad for nuclear uh, to be not working because French closed half of their nuclear because of some critical uh, problems in their infrastructure. Um, and then he uh, attacks that uh, because it's not weather dependent, which is true. Um, but uh, 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 there is a problem of corruption, etc. Uh, so, but. Uh, but I think I continued somewhere else then with a longer thread. Uh, probably here. So here uh, in this thread, you can see how somebody who has uh, scientific and uh, published position is being attacked by uh, trolls because he's famous and then trolls are attracted to him like uh, uh, flies to the uh, 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 to to something what what they attract so let me continue with um, the presentation uh, we are now getting i think close to the end uh, what are the strategies against troll? Uh, this is actually my last uh, slide. Uh, so if you want to fight trolls, and it can be very interesting and it's necessary uh, because we have to learn how to uh, live with them and how to fight them because we should not ban them. If you ban them, then um, uh, we lost uh, democracy and free speech. Uh, but uh, you can ban them personally if they're um, uh, um, insulting you or you th you think you don't have time. Uh, you should choose only trolls with whom you think you can win the war. Uh, because you cannot win against all trolls because there are a uh, hundred times more trolls than uh, uh, serious people uh, in this uh, process. Uh, is this uh, is there a, a formula to debunk fast? Well, uh, uh, yes, I use one liner. Um, one liners can be good, but then you are uh, decreasing the quality of information. Uh, you can use uh, links to excellent debunking uh, uh, threads or uh, papers. Uh, in this way, you will. Uh, uh, you will uh, uh, manage uh, to cut their arguments quicker. It's good to learn how to do it quickly, but they will always come with new arguments. Uh, so they have lots of time and money, so be careful. Uh, they always have more money than uh, mon more time than you. Uh, do not do it if you uh, uh, feel uh, if you easily get hurt because they will hurt you. Uh, you can do it for fun or because you want to practice argumentation skills, uh, but that don't get emotionally involved ever with the trolls. Uh, debunk them with arguments, one tweet at a time, because if you put a lot of tweets, uh, you lose a lot of time. Uh, they will come back and you will be able to use other arguments you have, but only if the discussion is followed by others. So if you have viewers, then it makes sense to uh, continue discussion. If you don't have viewers, it doesn't really make sense because you will not change opinion of the troll, but you can, of course, practice without viewers. It can be very interesting. Uh, you can sometimes use authority as me if you have one, but then expect to be savagely attacked. If I say I'm a scientist, this is my expertise, uh, they will attack me with a free speech thing and things like that. So be careful about using that. Uh, 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 best is to block or ignore trolls. Uh, do not feed the trolls rule. But sometimes, of course, if you want to create discussion, if you want to practice argumentation, 
uh, it's good to against them. So think about it. Uh, and uh, now uh, to the questions. Uh, I have uh, several of them in uh, uh, in the chats. OK, going backwards. Wow, there were a lot of. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, OK, so. Media and scientific literacy, scientific literacy primarily is our tools. Yes, that is true. I agree. We should educate kids in schools on topics of digital culture etiquette. Uh, I agree, but uh, it's difficult because we first have to learn that. Critical thinking is uh, critical. I fully agree with that. Uh, it is up to reasonable people to debunk the trolls until artificial intelligence evolves enough to take over. OK, I can't uh, say anything. I agree. Trolls already use them. Uh, uh, you, you, artificial intelligence, yes, probably. So they will build artificial intelligence uh, trolls. Uh, I guess there are a lot of bots which are kind of in artificial intelligent trolls. Uh, uh, there are already on uh, social networks, but you can easily recognize them because they um, uh, you can easily uh, find out that uh, they're just repeating uh, uh, arguments and they cannot really get into uh, too complicated argumentation. Uh, but they're getting better and better and uh, uh, now the, the sport in uh, Croatia, at least, is how to cheat uh, this chat uh, CGT. And I've seen quite a lot of people managing to cheat it because it's actually not based on facts. It's based on statistics uh, of the language uh, and it doesn't check its facts. So if you ask him uh, facts, you will not get facts. I think we should cover all the deserts with photovoltaics and produce renewable energy for the entire planet. Um, well, we don't need all deserts. We need only uh, uh, the 10,000 uh, 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 area, some like 150, 150 kilometers. Uh, the problem is uh, deserts are unfortunately in um, uh, far away places. So that makes us vulnerable uh, to anybody who wants to attack infrastructure. So we should basically uh, try to do to produce most uh, energy from uh, uh, local places to make it distributed uh, in order to make it more resilient. Uh, we can use roofs, we can use uh, parking lots, we can use a uh, lot of land which is not very fertile. Uh, we don't need that much land for 100% renewable energy systems. Um, is there any scientific survey how much arguments, tweets, posts on social media actually influence policies, energy, uh, traffic transition? Uh, I didn't see that, but I would guess that it's uh, quite powerful, uh, quite strong. Uh, since techno-economically speaking, uh, we could do energy transition and climate change mitigation in uh, probably less than. Uh, 10, 15 years, so it will be. It's technically possible, and it's uh, cheaper than continuing with uh, business as usual. But we are not doing that because uh, all this uh, money invested in trolling, uh, in argumentation, which is confusing people, is actually influencing uh, politicians and uh, decision makers. Uh, I'm not sure if I understood uh, stand the uh, IPEX uh, question about Chernobyl disaster risk. Uh, that particular source of nuclear uh, energy is uh, has very particular risks, so we should not compare it with other nuclear power plants. But there is uh, a huge design problem in older nuclear power plants. Uh, since they have, they can be actually uh, destroyed by uh, two uh, drones. You um, cut the grid and you destroy diesel engines and you get uh, basically Fukushima, not not Chernobyl though. 
Chernobyl is very particular design. Uh, so we have to uh, upgrade uh, nuclear power plants. It's possible to be done, but it's extremely expensive. It is being done, uh, but I'm not uh, seeing nuclear um, as a great solution for climate because it's expensive and it takes long to build. Uh, but from climate point of view, nuclear is uh, 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 quite good. <coughs> Uh, I was referring to the ten tendency to use first class land for the construction of photovoltaics. Unfortunately, a trend in our country. Yes, that should probably be avoided, but there is something what is called agrivoltaics, uh, which is, uh, um, if implemented properly, should not be that bad. So if you um, space photovoltaics far enough, so you leave the space for uh, agricultural production, you can actually reduce evaporation, you can reduce uh, 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 direct sunshine, which can be good for some cultures, um, and uh, you can significantly increase incomes of uh, people uh, that work in agriculture. So uh, there is a compromise, uh, but I'm not expert in that, so I cannot say that I know, uh, but there is quite a lot of uh, useless land that could be used for photo photovoltaics, but one has to be careful that sometimes this useless land can be very important for biodiversity. Uh, so you have to carefully check each uh, situation. Also, some deserts are also good for biodiversity. Do you really think that Rio Tinto cancel lithium mine in Serbia? I don't do not agree. Did I say that? I was wrong. It was not canceled. It was uh, canceled by the government. I think that they will continue, but not with the same name, Rio Tinto. Uh, who is Rio Sava? Well, I don't know any details, but uh, in my uh, humble opinion, uh, as a citizen, not as an expert, uh, I think that that mine is extremely important for the future of Europe uh, and that uh, uh, it will probably be continued, but uh, with probably better negotiation point of the Serbian government. Um, uh, of course, it is very important that it's implemented in an environmentally acceptable way. Um, we all are afraid of such projects that is completely reasonable, but we need this lithium. Uh, it has enough lithium for uh, the whole of European uh, transport decarbonization. Uh, it could give a very significant role to Serbia in the future of Europe, uh, but I understand the government that wants to get the best out of its uh, resource. So, um, we should look at it uh, from uh, a pragmatic point of view. Um, yes, it's the best if they are on the roofs, uh, but we cannot do all of them on the roofs because uh, we we have only a certain amount of roofs. So we also need um, land-based uh, solar panels and also land-based solar panels can be built much faster than roof-based. We should build as much as possible on the roofs. I fully agree, but it will take time um, uh, to cover all the roofs with solar panels and uh, we need to decrease emissions quickly. So for that, we also need big uh, solar power plants. Uh, Yeah, well, we don't recycle everything. The, the, the crucial problem are plastics uh, because they are not really recyclable or they're recyclable, but it's not uh, economically viable. But if you look at metals, they are recycled. If you look at uh, glass, it's recycled. Paper, it's recycled if it's uh, collected separately. So the recycling question is uh, also the question of uh, uh, economic model. Uh, when debunking, do we check the timeline, causality, etc.? Is there formula um, to to debunk fast? Well, you um, 
you could check everything, but uh, um, you don't have time to do that. So basically, uh, if you do it fast, then you are picking the first error that you find in the argument of the troll. Uh, if you want to do it properly, then you have to write uh, a thread and then you have to go uh, in each possible aspect of the problem. Um, and uh, you have to cite a lot of papers and other threads, etc., in order to build your argument. But that's not fast. For such a thread, you can uh, use the whole day. Uh, well, yeah, they could move uh, further and we should not do that because we need to win uh, these arguments uh, in an open space and we are winning it. You know, we are, uh, transition is working. 90% uh, of new technology installed are renewables. Uh, so uh, we are winning this war, but of course for next 20 years there will be uh, trolls uh, 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 fighting us uh, strongly, fighting science, because they will be fossil fuels. We cannot kill the fossil fuels tomorrow. We will be using them even uh, in 2045, even in 2050, but we have to reduce these fossil fuels as much as possible, as fast as possible. Uh, okay, so I'm getting some very nice words. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I didn't finish yet. There are uh, assignments still. Uh, okay, okay, okay. OK, another question. I wonder why we cannot complete out individual assignment. OK, I don't know that. Anna, that's for you. Uh, thank you, thank you. OK. Yes, I agree. I'm not on Instagram. Uh, that's for young people. But yeah, if you want it's, it's up, it's for you to decide. If you want, we can also uh, take some other social medias from Instagram and Facebook. Well, so Instagram is for, for salads, and I agree with that. I, I think it's Twitter is salad. better. It's for everything you go to eat outside, so people see what you eat. <laughs> okay, I agree, I agree. Okay, uh, I don't know anything about Instagram, so uh, 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 you choose. Uh, Twitter is not the most toxic one. I don't agree with that. Facebook is much more toxic. Uh, but okay, you can uh, do it on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a high-quality one. Uh, you can do it on Facebook. It uh, has a lot of trolls. I'm not sure about Instagram. I, I have no account, uh, functioning account on Instagram, and I have never seen these discussions on uh, 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 Instagram. So, okay. Yeah, uh, Twitter has this advantage that you have 140 uh, characters and you have to be quick uh, thinking. Uh, OK. Aha, so, uh, uh, social media apps energy consumption. It's significant, yes, it's true, but it's uh, insignificant with heating. And heating we can decarbonize easily and social media is electricity. If electricity is 100% renewable uh, or decarbonized, we are uh, fine. Uh, fossil fuels are limited, but not so limited that we can save climate with ending them. Um, okay, you don't like Twitter. I like Twitter, but uh, I don't... Uh, I don't really mind if Anna thinks it could be anything else. So, Anna, would you explain the team assignment or me? Sure. Yes, sure. So, I hope Please. you can hear me. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. So, uh, you have two assignments, as you could already see. The first one is team assignment, which you will write in teams. I assume that the teams are already um, established. Uh, and then you also need to write your self evaluation uh, in terms of how many uh, or in terms of participation of each team member. So I assume that you already did this for your earlier assignments. So for this, you need to write uh, pro and cons arguments regarding the two topics of videos below about wind turbine killing is worth 
and agile on the position of climate change, killing them all. So, um, as it's written here, this is the assignment writing this essay with pro and cons on uh, uh, on uh, wind turbine killing birds and uh, or climate change instead killing them faster. Uh, so um, yeah, I think that this is quite um, this is quite straightforward, and I saw that you did not have many questions about things. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, Anna, we don't uh, we don't hear you very well. Your connection is not very good. Uh, yeah, it's not about my connection. It's more like I don't hear you at uh, all. It's uh, you're completely lost. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's sometimes with me with the things. So can, can, uh, can you can you uh, log log in uh, from mobile phone or? Uh, no, uh, it, it will not work. It will not make any difference. You know, because I already have these issues uh, with things. So we'll just continue now and hope that you can hear me better. I will try to talk louder. So no, it will uh, not help. But okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, regarding the team assignment, I saw that you did not have a lot of questions for this, so I guess this is quite straightforward. Uh, please do not use to uh, please do not use uh, uh, Chat GPI, Open AI, because we would like to hear your uh, thoughts on this and not um, the thoughts of artificial intelligence. Okay, so now please go to the next slide. Okay, so this is the slide which I see there was a lot of debate in chat. So this is the individual assignment and uh, your assignment is respond to a tweet which shows only one side of the problem. Once you do this, take a screenshot of the tweet and upload it to in the picture format on the learning platform. So uh, if the Twitter is such a big issue for some of you, uh, then we can also uh, you can also select some other social media like YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, but uh, we, you cannot select TikTok because you cannot screenshot video. And I think that on TikTok there are only videos. So yeah, now and if you agree, we can also consider other. We can also yeah, you can also respond to other social medias. So that's all regarding the assignments. Okay, I agree. I don't mind uh, uh, other social media, uh, but um, I wonder how on Instagram one will find trolls. Uh, but um, no, you choose the the, the, uh, the the tweet you want to respond. So find a tweet uh, that is only showing one side of the problem, uh, and then try to attack it or. Uh, uh, put uh, a good argumentation uh, for the other side. We are not saying which side you should attack. You can troll yourself, nope, uh, be a troll. Uh, we will see uh, just from this assignment how uh, how good you uh, do it. And the critical thing, yes, environmental uh, issue. It should be environmental issue, no anti-vaxxers. Uh, no such things. Uh, this study is about environment. So, but you don't have to choose wind turbines for the uh, individual uh, assignment. If I'm not wrong, Anna, it can be any. Uh, well, animal welfare is not environmental issue. You can choose biodiversity. Uh, you can choose species, species protection, but not animal uh, welfare. Uh, animals that are uh, uh, domesticated animals are not part of environment. They are part of uh, uh, human uh, uh, artificial bubble. Uh, so uh, no cats, please. But uh, wild cats, yes. Protection of wild cats, that's good. But not uh, <laughs> cats. Lovers are devastated. Sorry, I'm a I'm a dog guy. <laughs> Uh, OK, so if we have finished with assignments, then I would ask uh, Snezhana or Maya 
uh, to come and present uh, the assignments uh, for the fourth webinar, uh, because the fourth webinar uh, has to be uh, prepared in advance. Snezhana, Maya, are you around? I will consider this a joke. OK. If. I think that uh, Snezhana and Maya can now use their microphone and camera to. OK, Snezhana is here, but uh, yes, she needs yes, to. Yes, we are both here. OK, perfect. Now it okay. works. Okay. My uh, the cloud is yours. Oh, thank you very much, Nevin, and thank you. I, we, we had the opportunity to join your, your very interesting and exciting uh, presentation. Not from the beginning, unfortunately. Uh, Maya is also here. Can you hear me just uh, to confirm that everything sounds good? Do you all hear me well? Yeah, okay. yes, we can, we can hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Uh, so for the next week, I won't take a lot of your time uh, because I imagine you are already overwhelmed with a uh, lot of information information you got from Professor uh, Nevin. But the next week we have uh, climate evolution and biodiversity, deforestation, this desertification, environmental disaster assessment, but and such you, you have all that in program, but we have one specific uh, task and that is that is to organize organize a debate between two teams which will you choose who will be involved in both in two teams pro and contra uh, mini hydro plants at the uh, region and wider but uh, please take in mind that we don't talk only about derivation type of mini hydro plants we talk about all mini hydro plants, including runoff uh, mini hydro plants type. So uh, we we are all aware of that issue in this uh, region for a uh, long now, ten years probably, uh, and it's it seems to be around uh, still around. So it is connected with the topic of water shortage versus uh, using renewable energy water as a renewable energy. So in short, uh, today we will make uh, two teams from first six uh, uh, students who apply as a volunteer, we'll make two teams, three from both sides, pro, three from pro, mini hydro plants and three contra. So your task will be to prepare pros and cons for the next week after our uh, lecture and presentation. You will take the floor and and you will get the same uh, uh, credentials from uh, administrator to talk and to use your camera. And for now, we only need see at least six volunteers who will uh, be involved in that debate and your assignment after that uh, week will be uh, evaluation form where we will all vote for the winner and we will all you will all explain uh, okay surgeon is already uh, uh, applied uh, so uh, we will have winners and we will you will all have a uh, chance to give your own opinion why you vote for team uh, pro why you vote from team contra so uh, for now we need uh, azra asks issue of mini hydropower plants in the western balkan regions it will be perfect yes but you can go bro wider than that we are not uh, necessarily um, you will be included in Team Pros. Okay, Zorica. Okay, Azra, will you, would you want to be in Team? 
just be careful because we have a lot of Maya will uh, Maya Novakovic is um, our assistant in ecology in Avisad, uh, and she will also take part in next week but uh, just be careful because we according to our experience in debates usually uh, the team who is not very um, popular in the mainstream society at the end wins because they better they are better prepared. So it is easy easier to be uh, pro against. It is much tougher at the moment to be pro. That's why I emphasize again to take in mind that there are many other uh uh types of mini hydro plants apart from derivation type where water is not uh captured in in a tube rather runoff over the turbine so so you will need to investigate around the uh, network and literature and find whoever azra uh, is about training is about doing such presenting but yes th this that's a great question azra <clears throat> yes we will send you uh, uh zaritza we will send you and we will tell you now uh, but we will also send you written form azra ask is it about winning or out about doing research presenting good and resource arguments uh winning is in persuading someone like a lawyer in the court you know even the guilty uh, or no one is guilty un until you prove uh, uh, ev everyone is innocent uh, before you prove he is guilty so it is it depends on your skill to persuade uh, the audience that it is not that for example it is not that all mini hydro plants are uh are uh, uh bad there are some types which don't necessarily impact that that, that much uh uh to the river so it all depends not only on uh arguments it depends on how you give this argument because communication and how people say something usually it is not what is said it is not even who said it who says it it is how that was said but in which way you present your case so understand that as a case in the court so you fight for your case and you find all pros or all cons in your case and uh <clears throat> Okay, Azra, I just want to have it. Okay, do you want to join? Um, uh, you will fo you will fight. Okay, so <laughs> okay, that's that's great. Uh, we need fighters now. Yes, uh, Azra, do you want to join uh, the debate? Because you already joined it. Uh, <clears throat> Maya, do you hear us? Yeah, I, I can hear everything. Yeah. Okay, now you we will explain how. Uh, what is the main rules? Because we have all six uh, uh, candidates. Uh, it will be like, just imagine you are in court and you prove your case. You will have five minutes. There are strict rules in every debate. Our rules is like this. Uh, first team get five minutes to for introductory word. So you will need to put in that five minutes everything what you th think it's it is uh, proving your opinion. You can make presentation if you want. You can go without presentation. You can uh, take some examples. You can uh, take some theoretical, uh, but it all must be in five minutes. We will cut you off even if you don't finish your sentence. So five minutes is for introductory word. You communi communicate between yours, I mean, three of you, you will have to communicate before that how you will use in the best way these five minutes, minutes of introductory word. 
Uh, wait a minute. One might use misleading information. Yes, of course. We are we we have we we have that every day in our everyday life when we open news on TV on any social media that people are using misinformation. That's why uh, you will have another part. Just just. Uh, to, to give you the whole the whole picture. So first five minutes introductory word for the first team number one, then five minutes for the team number two introductory word for their case, then three minutes for the team first team to give question to opposite team, then three minutes for the the for question to so just to give a question then we ha can have a break of five minutes to you know to to prepare for the for answer and then five minutes is it maya am i correct five minutes or ten minutes for answering uh the opposite team questions it is like cross examination in the court you know when you have witness and you have the lawyer who try to make that witness witness uh incredible so if someone as azra said uh i didn't I just want to have it clarified uh, well i can't talk and answer your question and read it at the same time wait a second uh, i just want to give you the whole picture about the uh, how the, the the debate will look like so at the end we have <clears throat> closing word like in court uh first team closing word and closing word five minutes for our three minutes we will see uh, you will get that in written form uh, at the end of of of, of this uh, introduction uh, and then we will see who will win in your evaluation form you, you vote and you explain why do you think that team number two team team against proved but you have to explain why do you think you can't say oh they were better or i hate mini hydro plants or hydro plants you can't you, you must fight with arguments and you have you must evaluate uh, uh the debate with the arguments so azra said that i didn't answer on your question uh what question, Azra? Uh, one might use misleading information on this information due to the fact that we will not have fact checking. Yes, but the other team is uh, the one who will get prepared for uh, uh, fact checking. The that's why you need to be prepared for for the. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I understand. I just want to have it clarified whether they will affect grades, since but uh, yes, but uh, what is in fact uh, fact checking? Where where you will uh, even if you have time, you you need a lot of time to to first consume information and then do real fact checking i mean wikipedia is not fact checking uh using internet and google is not fact uh, fact checking only science is, is fact checking so uh in this case fact checking uh is is not uh is not uh applicable if you want because uh you need more than one year to, to check the facts uh, Angela said, I think the question is general how we are going to be graded for this assignment. Uh, you will get, uh, you will uh, have the evaluation form, as I said, uh, you will vote for the team, but you will have to explain why, why they prove. So you will have, to, we will see how much you learn during the debate in uh in uh, in your answer on in your explanation why do you think that why do you vote for uh for that uh, that case one or case two and and you to give the facts so you can't just walk and and leave 
it, it is not assignment. The debate is the next Tuesday, yes, a week from now, yes. No, it, it's, uh, I think, next Thursday. I uh, think that the next uh, webinar Thursday. and, yeah, I think that the next webinar and the debate is scheduled for the next Thursday. Thursday, okay, thank you, Maya. I thought also it is on Tuesday. I don't know why. Yeah, I think that is on... Uh, Thursday because uh, participants have this week to fulfill the assignment for the Neven and yeah. Anna and then to have four days to, pe to prepare for yeah. debate. Uh, and also, Azra, uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, we gave the topic of the debate this week so you all can prepare until next, thur next Thursday. Then the debate will happen and we will all hear the pro and the con side. But after that Thursday, we will all have four more days to write evaluation. Why did we vote for the team pro or the, for the team con? You don't have to vote at the moment when the debate is happening. You will write your vote four days later. No, 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 uh, I, no, I understand, uh, no, uh, wait a second, just, just to answer to Azra, uh, she said, will the grades for the group members of pro or contra teams depend on the decision of people who want the debate? No, uh, you will, uh, be, uh, uh, your assignment is uh, your own op opinion and it doesn't matter whether you vote for a uh, winner or not. Is, is that, if that was a question, Maya, did I understand well? Is that yeah, that only only the quality of your evaluation. So only your the quality, yeah. yes. Only the because quality of your you will, own you will... evaluation and your opinion will make your, case, your, your grades, not the grade of winner. Winner will get uh, a paper from us as a as a teacher that they win uh won the debate but it doesn't uh, in fact uh, doesn't affect anything and anyone else it is just they were better but again i i will talk about mini hydro plants in my my uh presentation but not too much because i want to leave the space for you no you don't did not understand the question what was the can I please get the microphone? Uh, please. Well, uh, Azra, as I understood, if the pro team wins, and if you, in your evaluation, vote for the contra team, you will not get the less amount of points. You will get the amount of points. Well, we cannot understand what did you ask, you know, you, I, I. No. Uh, can I, can, uh, I don't know, is administrator, we are not administrators, so we don't, we can't. Uh, give the microphone, uh, credentials to. Right, Maya? Yeah, I, I cannot do it, yeah. I don't have... I, I can't do that as well. Uh, Azra is asking, Maria said, Azra is asking if she will get extra points for participating. Uh, no. Uh, the, for, for winner, or we can agree uh, later for, for both teams, you can get paper that you... Like extra paper not uh, uh, extra points. Uh, so, may I just jump in? Because I think I just understood the question is that some participants will be part of the debate and some uh, will not be part of the debate, right? Yes, but we can't but have... It's both we, can't have right? we can't have, sorry, I, I don't hear you very well, but we can't have 90 people in debate. Okay, so the question is, those who will participate, will they get any extra, no matter in what team they are? 
No, they are volunteering, as the professor said in the yes, very beginning of the. Here. Yeah, she they said they that any extra points for being part of the debate. They will, they will right? fight to win the environmental communication debate. <laughs> very simple, and uh, it is not all about extra points. Uh, uh, oh. Everyone have uh, everyone has the same chance to have points. The point is that uh, people who want to exercise their skill in environmental communication have a perfect opportunity. Okay, I, I think that I understood now. Uh, Adra is asking how she will get her points if she participate in the debate. Stop. You know, be, uh, uh, Azra is asking, she understand that the rest of the people will write the evaluation about the debate teams, but she's wondering how will she get her points when she is in the debate, you know? She will also, she will also make the evaluation form and, and vote and prove her case in her evaluation form as 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 everyone else the, the the people who are in debate has the same evaluation form and the same uh the same the same rules for as everyone else so they vote for themselves and they for for example if they really join the debate if they volunteer they will be extra prepared so their evaluation form and their uh, ex uh, uh, explanation why they vo vote for pro and contra will be written in a, in the best possible way because they are prepared. So they Okay, we didn't understand the question, Azra. Okay, that now she got the answer. Uh, Azra, asked. do you understand now? Yeah, yeah, she written it, yeah, in the comments. Okay, okay. Okay, so in the end, you will also fill out the evaluation form and then you can say, the pro team was great, but the uh, con team got us there and there and there and stuff like that. You, need, you know, you, we all need to write evaluation of the debate because in the end, as the professor said, it doesn't matter what was our opinion about the team before the debate. In the end of the debate, we will know which team persuaded and which team was better in explaining the topic even though we might not agree with the fact that mini hydropower plants are good, we will say, okay, but they were better. And that's what I'm voting for them. You know, it, it's happening all the time in the debate. It happens, it happens all the time in our practice at the university that people, uh, that students who are, uh, who choose uh, on the first ball, as we said, uh, who choose, uh, Oh, I am against uh, Rio Tinto. I'm against mini hydro plants, and they usually they can't on already established op opinion that most of people are against it, and they don't prepare themselves well for the debate. But while the contra team uh, doesn't have much to much material, and they dig and dig and dig and, and investigate, and they make their case better. So we had in, in the past, even though we don't think, for example, uh, about, I don't know, uh, nuclear power plants, this and that, we have that people vote, at the end, students vote for the team because they persuaded them. They didn't know so many facts about the other, the other side of, of, of the story. The, the whole point of this uh, program uh, is environmental communication. And when you say communication, when you say media, you always have mainstream media. And you, uh, you will see during the debate, if anyone at the Brilla volunteered, uh, no one noticed, we noticed now, except for Sergeant, <laughs> okay, I noticed the Brilla, I just didn't have time to to reply. Uh, so you will see uh, that that uh, well, might might see might not, but uh, usually uh, uh, 
it is not you see that in the court in, when you watch the real court or 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 movies uh you will see that it is not always whether the 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 uh person is guilty or not it is how good lawyer is uh and how he use his knowledge and communicative communication skills to persuade the jury that there is a reasonable doubt and they can't convict him so just take i i know that there are lawyers uh, between you at the moment who listen to that and so it is like crisis management control exercise uh well no it is more like uh, like a uh, court room and uh uh advocacy yes advice what is it oh my god advocacy. okay uh, so you said five minutes for debate this take too long oh no it it uh, well this take too long okay uh well we so uh we this take too long because we don't have the other team Do we have team pro? Uh, yeah, I think that uh, someone in the big, just a moment. Sorry, it says pro. Okay. We need to have team before we send questions. We need to have team, so we communicate them that with the team. This debate will include, uh, yes. Yes, Dobrila, yes. We don't have to have a break, for example. So we have Dobrila uh, and uh surgeon and who else in team against and we have um surgeon dobrila x against is or it's a pro Zor, it's a pro. So we need more volunteers. Otherwise, we will have to jump, my and I, and you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to debate with us for any, any. Uh, and Natasha uh is in as well from which team pro or against natasha are you in team with zorica or with surgeon and dobrila against okay so we have full team against and only zorica in pro so uh there is one more uh, okay okay we will see that uh so i will just to, to give you one more information and that is that maya and i or my team at the university of navi Sad is a court witness or sulski verstak in uh criminal cases in mini hydro plants in courts in Serbia. So 
we are we are very familiar you can't give any mislead information or or uh, or or trick with us so uh okay we need uh some more people if we, if we don't have anyone at the moment uh we have only zorica in in the team uh well why don't you join just for fun i mean you can't lose anything you'll just have fun you won't leave zorica come on gentlemen you can't leave zorica alone with against surgeon and and no 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 zorica i will join you if you are alone <laughs> well that is your advantage actually because uh your your case look better if you are against the whole world <laughs> uh okay do we have some gentlemen to join zorica to support her come on guys you can't leave the girl to fight against surgeon and his uh his team alone uh nina jovic just applied nina to... you will be pro bravo nina yes yeah. <laughs> so it's i like i i already like so it's how she thinks okay very funny uh okay we have nina and the uh, zaritza in pro and we need one more one more volunteer come on come on people it's, it will be fun it's all about practicing uh environmental communication and and see how it works in a real debate it is one one thing to to talk uh in interview or to talk for some uh to give uh, your opinion on social media to argue with unknown people on twitter on facebook on and it is uh, different when you have face to face uh online but face face to face in real time to answer the question and you don't if you don't have an answer and just say i'm against it 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 is make damage but give me the fact so if you don't have it you lose your case it looks it doesn't look good it it makes a reasonable doubt if it's a jury zorica okay do we have someone else or or not so the, uh, uh, i don't i said that i don't want to take your time but we need to one more volunteer or nina and zorica are enough we'll see i mean two girls it will be challenge even for for okay yavana just said that she will join the pro team who i don't see that yavana yeah oh, I... she just oh so, so great okay yavana nina and zorica are pro uh and uh Former Yugoslavia, I didn't see any of these comments. Okay, Yugoslavia, I went to court. Yelena, you are you're the queen. Uh, uh, okay, Yelena, you made such a good comment. It is pity you don't join any of these teams. Okay, whoever is already made the university. Thank you very much. Thank you, Zarica. Uh it will be uh yes, exactly. It is especially a brain exercise if you are against totally and then you have to to prove that it might not be that bad. But believe me, just take in take <laughs> Uh, just uh, 
have in mind when you prepare the debate, we are not talking only about derivation type derivatives in it. We talk about any mini hydroplants, other types, a runoff where the river flows in their own uh, riverbed. These mini hydroplants we have in the Balkans is the most cruel ones because they are the cheapest models. There are other models. So you need to uh, research and to attack, if you want, the team against to see if they know there are other types. Because we don't talk only about derivation types. We talk about other types as well. So, OK, mm -hmm. we now have teams and have a really <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward for the next Thursday, really. Uh, okay, uh, see you next Thursday. I will use my camera next Thursday. Thursday, we can talk about uh, uh, Yugoslavia if you want. We have things, but we haven't got the date. Yes, we have uh, the date Thursday, right? Yeah, I think, uh, well, According to the schedule that I have, I think that the debate is scheduled for the next Thursday, that yeah. is uh, 9th of February at 19 or it is 7 a.m. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Abrila. I yes. think that, yeah. I yes, think I that... just meant to say, uh, someone said it, uh, this will be fun. It will be fun. And Maya is, Maya knows. When we have debate, for example, in our uh, lectures at the university, we finish our lecture, we vote, and we have winner teams. Uh, Maya and I went to our offices, uh, we have coffee and uh, another work, and after a few hours we leave the building and the teams are still in the hall fighting and having them by it, they still didn't finish. They still fight in the, they smoke in front of the building and still fight who was right and who was wrong. It, it, it gets, sometimes it, it really gets really, really hot and a debate. So, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. When, if you ask Srijan, uh, then uh, you will have to be prepared to, to have the answer. No. Okay, so you go to sleep uh, before the debate. And uh, we will... Uh, Maya, do you, did you want uh, to say something else? or? Uh, yeah, I just uh, wanted to finish with a few technical things. Uh, uh, tomorrow I will uh, put on the forum of the... on the website the rules of the debate and also we will make the evaluation form so you can you can uh, familiarize yourself with the points that you should be taking care on during the debate so you will get everything tomorrow you just need to follow the forum and then you will get the rules and everything okay uh you can go and take a good rest before your debate <laughs> and get prepared and don't forget don't again don't forget we don't talk about only about derivation type types we talks about all mini hydro plants okay uh people have a great night and uh see you uh next thursday before that we will be uh, we will communicate with uh, uh, on the chat or all emails, Maya. Emails. Uh, right? Emails and the forum. And the forum, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm looking, really looking forward. It's a, it's a great group of people. I, I already looking. Can't wait next Thursday. Okay. Bye bye. And. Okay.